Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Shorts, where today we're going to be talking about this interesting looking plant here before you. Now, its scientific name is Bigeloia nutali. It's commonly called the rayless goldenrod, and as you can see, these are the flowers up here, and there are no petals, henceforth the lack of rays which is a common term for petals on flowers, especially when they're in the Asteraceae family, which this is. This thing is a daisy, believe it or not, and it's a native, and you should have it in your garden, because it is one of the few daisies that is totally a rock garden themed. But we'll get to that in a moment. Now, this is native to the southern USA, so Zone 8A is its jam, and if you're fortunate enough to find a grower that sells them, buy a few. But give them space, because faster growing neighbors can easily choke them out. They're used to growing in places where there is very little competition. They are hardy in USDA zones 4 through 10, and they're considered a perennial subshrub. Uh, in our climate, this thing is practically evergreen, which is a nice bonus. These little wispy things down here are actually leaves, except they're needle-like, and that is an adaptation to handle heat. Uh, drought and other factors by presenting less surface area for the sun to cook. Super clever, but if you notice, they're curled downward so that when dew and rain hits it, it drips the dew right around its root base. Clever. Now, uh, when it comes to soil pH, it's adaptable. It, that's literally, every reference says just adaptable. And if you go to some place that's kind of whack like Dave's Garden, it basically lists every soil pH under the sun short of pure liquid hydrochloric acid. Weird. But anyway, apparently it takes anything, and this is one of the survivors in the Crescent Garden, which I had, I'm rescuing plants from, which is where this came from, and it was doing just fine, though it was in threat of being choked out. So, Super Gardener to the rescue! Well, anyway... Its exposure is full sun to partial shade, which I believe full sun definitely. Um, it says that its height can be up to two feet, which I presume includes the flower rift, the flower stalks, which are persistent. Uh, its width can be up to a foot, also believable. And I would say its use is in replacement of places where you cannot grow actual moss, because it almost looks like a club moss, except on steroids. Okay. Now, it has another name, Nuttall's Rayless Goldenrod. Yeah, I know, that sounds like a cop-out, but that's the other name for it. It is very drought-tolerant. It is a food source for pollinators via uh, production of pollen, of course. It's noted that all sp um, native species of bees love it. Win-win. It does say that it needs space, which I noted before, and so it should be planted where its neighbors are not too aggressive or invasive. Um, it will tolerate laser southern sun, which is always a bonus, and of course it's a daisy, so, and native, so it's something to consider. Now, it's been recommended to grow a, in with things like ice plants and other things that aren't exactly fast growing, but can tolerate the same kind of heat and light. In my case, I'm planning to move it to a spot where it can do better and it won't have as much competition. Um, the plan is actually to put it in with some cone flowers some cayenne spirit home flowers and see what happens with space, of course. Because you gotta have space for your space while you space your space. Spaceception. But anyway, this is the 101st episode, folks. So, stay tuned. There's more good things to come. I hope you like the 100th episode. One does not simply do these things. Anyway. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit up the blog, um, and keep them growing, folks. Thanks for watching.